undefeated Ursinus welcome to McDaniel to Patterson Field and the Bears jumped out early. Here senior running back Jason Golder breaks out of the pile, finds room down the right sideline 52 yards deep into McDaniel territory. Golder got the call in this three yard run and put the Bears up 7-0 early in the first quarter. Ursinus extended his lead to 14-0 on this 39 yard pass from Chris Curran to Jerry Rahill. McDaniel got on the board on the special teams. Mike Olivetto breaks through, blocks the punt. Marty Windish falls on it to close the deficit to 14-7. Eric Boyer's 36-yard field goal extended the Bears' lead to 17-7. And when Kevin Monahan teamed with Josh Williams on this 7-yard touchdown pass, Ursinus took a 24-7 lead to the locker room at the break. McDaniel opened up the second half on this 48-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Yamada to Nick Amelia. But Monahan threw his second touchdown pass of the day, this time a four-yarder to Ray Hill to make it 33-14. Yamada came right back on a 19-yard pass to Amelia to make it 33-21. But Monahan's third touchdown pass of the day, another four-yarder to Ray Hill, wrapped up the scoring for Sinus Pete McDaniel 40-21. Muhlenberg struck early in his game against Johns Hopkins here. Nick Palladino teamed with Cody Geyer on a 52-yard pass. That sets up Connor Winner with his 27-yard field goal and the Mules led 3-0. The Jays came right back here. J.D. Abbott takes it, takes it into the end zone from one yard out to give the Jays a 7-3 lead. Winner comes right back with a career-long 44-yard field goal to pull the Mules within one. Abbott gets the handoff and scores his second touchdown in the first half and Hopkins leads 14-6. Mules come right back. Paladino looks deep, finds Mike Harris, Deep into Hopkins territory, and here Paladino rolls right, looks for Harris in the end zone for a 17-yard touchdown to make it 14-13. But Hopkins scores just before the end of the half. Robbie Mady, a 23-yard pass to Bob Garazio, makes it 21-13 Hopkins, and it was all Blue Jays after that. Here Nick Campbell with a 36-yard field goal. Abbott scores his third touchdown of the day, and when Brandon Cherry scores his second touchdown of the day, it was all Hopkins, 43-14. Always lots of big plays when Gettysburg and Susquehanna meet here. Tommy Lenore takes a pass over the middle and goes 46 yards to give Gettysburg a 7-0 lead. Susquehanna comes right back. Cam Olson looks deep for Colin Buckley for a 35-yard touchdown pass. Eddie Hutchins puts the orange and blue back in front in this short touchdown run. But Olson throws his second touchdown pass of the day. Here 19 yards to Pat Murtha to tie the score at 14. Two plays later though, Kyle Wigley takes the handoff up the middle, breaks through, and goes 63 yards to pay dirt to give the Bullets a 21-14 lead at the break. After that, it was Zach Miller and Aiden Twer. Here, Miller looks left side, finds Twer in the end zone for a 20-yard touchdown to put Gettysburg up 28-14. Next possession, Miller looks deep to Twer. And he hits him on a post pattern and Twer takes it the distance, 73 yards to give Gettysburg a comfortable 35-14 lead. But Susquehanna battled back. Here, Merle Moscarello takes the handoff and powers his way five yards into the end zone to make it 35-21. And when Tim Wade scores on this five-yard run, Susquehanna was back in business trailing 35-28. But Gettysburg applied the clincher on this Freddy Caruso pass to Alex Vaselli. 21 yards, Gettysburg went on to win 42-28. Dickinson opened the scoring against Winless Moravia on this Sean Wilson 11-yard run around the left end. The Greyhounds would come right back. Quarterback Robbie Moyer looks in the left flat for Jimmy McCarthy, who does the rest. McCarthy down the left sideline 62 yards to tie the game at 7. Dickinson would take the lead again. Here, Colin L. buys time, throws over the middle to his tight end, Todd Smolinski, who breaks one tackle, gets a good block, and dives into the end zone to give the Red Devils a 14-7 lead. Then special teams play. Gave Dickinson a 21-7 lead, blocking the putt. Mark Manginero scoops it up, and the Red Devils led by 14 at the half. Sean Wilson takes his hand off and goes 41 yards for a touchdown. Wilson 230 yards in the day and Dickinson led 28 to 7. After that, it was all of the Red Devil defense picking off Moravian quarterback six times on the afternoon. Dickinson evens his record at 2 and 2 with a 31-7 victory. 
Juniata brought his 3-0 record to Lancaster to take on Franklin and Marshall. Here, Jordan Zachary starts Franklin and Marshall's opening drive with a 22-yard punt return. Zachary returned four punts for 168 yards on the day. Quarterback DJ Schneider calls his own number on the quarterback draw, finds running room up the middle 32 yards to give FNM a 7-0 lead. Then, Zachary takes a punt on two bounces, finds running room up the right side, picks up a key block, and runs 66 yards for a touchdown to give the Diplomats a 14-0 lead. After the two teams exchanged field goals, Juniata came right back on this 8-yard touchdown pass from Ward Udinsky to Devon Mitchell to make it 17-10. F&M extended this lead to two touchdowns on this 3-yard pass from Schneider to Zachary to close out the first half scoring, and when Schneider teamed with Tim Muller, on this one-yard pass, it made it 31 to 10. But it was that man Zachary again here, taking another punt along the right sideline, deep into Juniata territory, setting up Schneider's second scoring run from seven yards out, which made it 39 to 10 Franklin and Marshall. And there was the defense, picking off Udinsky. Franklin and Marshall evens this record at two and two with a 46-16 victory over the Eagles. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle. Today, we welcome Dickinson head coach Darwin Bro. And his Red Devils are currently 2-2 two and two, and headed to Lancaster this weekend for the annual Conestoga Wagon Trophy game against Franklin and Marshall. And coach, welcome to Inside the Huddle. And after two early losses, the team has really seemed to right the ship with wins over Susquehanna and Moravian last week. Uh, the offense certainly has it in gear right now, led by uh, the play of a quarterback, Cole Ennell. Cole certainly played well. Uh, he's really done some good things for us. He's an athletic uh, young man and has been able to do some things positively in the passing game and in the running game. So he's, uh, he's certainly our leader and he's played very well. Sean Wilson has certainly blossomed in the last two weeks. I think he had he's just under 100 yards in Susquehanna and really first up with 230 yards last week about Moravian. Talk about his play and the improvement of the offensive line. Sean has really come into his own the last two weeks, really done some good things. Uh, he's a downhill type runner and uh, really pleased with the performance of the last two weeks, particularly last week. Uh, he had no negative yards and um, our offensive line is coming along. We're making progress every week and uh, certainly going to work to continue to improve. But Sean has done some tremendous things for us. Uh, he loves the, to have the football in his hands. And as I said, he's a, a downhill type runner, very, uh, very physical kid. So we're, we're pleased with his performance so far. It was certainly an all-around team victory last week over Moravia, and the defense coming up with six interceptions, very opportunistic. Uh, talk about their progress throughout the year. We, we really felt it was a great team win for us last week, and defensively we were able to put pressure on the quarterback, uh, both of their quarterbacks actually, and, uh, and maybe hurry some throws, and our defensive backs came up with, uh, with six interceptions, actually had a chance at two more, and uh, – we're really pleased with the pressure we were able to put on the quarterback and then uh, the opportunistic play of, of all of our defense. We really made some things happen. This week is uh, Conestoga Wagon Week. And for those who don't know, back in 1963, the athletic directors of Dickinson and Franklin Marshall came together and uh, created a trophy, the Conestoga Wagon Trophy, for the winner of the Dickinson F&M game. Talk about, talk about Wagon Week on, uh, on the Dickinson campus and uh, what it brings as leading up to the game against Franklin and Marshall. Well, this is a big game for both teams. There's uh, no question about it. It's a, a huge rival game. Uh, if you ask uh, players from either team, I'm sure they, they look forward to this game every single year. Uh, the intensity level will be great. It's, a, it's really a true rival-type game. Uh, I'm sure the atmosphere is going to be good. It's, I, I understand it's homecoming at Franklin Marshall this weekend, so it'll be a big crowd. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's an appropriate setting for this type of game where we play for the Conestoga Wagon. And, uh, uh, our guys are, are talking about the wagon, and I'm sure they'll talk about it all week and look forward to Saturday afternoon. What kind of things have you seen on film that impress you about the Diplomats? Uh, well, they're, uh, they're a good football team. They've, they've played some very good opponents uh, in all four games. And uh, athletically, the quarterback makes plays, uh, makes things happen. Um, very good at the running back spot. They're athletic and on defense. They run with the ball. Um, very good offensive line, uh, skilled guys. I mean, they're a very good football team. They've, they've had uh, some good games in the conference, you know, lost a, a close one to uh, our science, but 
beat Muhlenberg, you beat Jun uh, Juniata in a good game. So uh, we're looking forward to a good game. Should be a good matchup. Dickinson head coach Darwin Bro, thanks for joining us inside the huddle. Best of luck this Saturday. Thanks, Steve.